I picked up this 3D printer for £82 on eBay. It's one of the tiniest, cheapest 3D printers I've ever owned. It's the WeFun Tina 2S. We're going to find out whether this is just a toy or whether you can actually use this, whether it's great for kids or whether it's just great for shows. We're gonna put it through its paces and see how it does. So there's really not a lot of information about this WeFun printer. It comes at 2,745-ish grams. It's got a 100 by 105 by 100 millimeter PI heated bed. And it comes with these ominous instructions on the side where you can't use third-party filament. We have one roll of their filament, we will be using third-party filament. It looks fairly clean, fairly simple to use. It was second-hand out of the box, but I don't think it'd been used very much because most of the filament was left. There's a USB port, an SD card port, and Wi-Fi built in. You can use their app or their version of Cura or their profiles. We'll be having a look at all of that in the setup. I got this printer secondhand, so it was partially set up when I actually got the printer, so the Z-axis rod had actually come loose. All I had to do was just tighten the grub screw at the bottom. It was no big deal. It just went right back into place. It was obviously just a bit loose, maybe got rattled in the box somewhat. It was easy enough to fix. To set up the printer, all I had to do was scan the QR code on top of the printer, or I believe there's one on the outside of the box. And you'll see why it doesn't really make sense for there to be one on top of the printer in just a second. But this is available on iOS and Android, and this is if you wanted to use the cloud features of this printer. You just skip this little tutorial, it just gives you a little bit of information about the printer, accept a few permissions, signed in with my Google account and click the printer I had, accepted a few more permissions, and then it actually goes through an unboxing tutorial for the printer. It tells you everything you need to do to get this printer set up, but if you scan the QR code on top of the printer, you'd already be, you know, halfway through this video. It did tell me to put the SD card in, so we did put that in. It was nice of the seller to include that because I noticed it wasn't in when I actually took it out. Then you just go to the Wi-Fi settings, scan the QR code, and you'll see I come to a bit of an issue. Due to this being secondhand, it was actually registered to someone else's account. So I had to either contact the seller, deregister it, or I had to request that WeFund do it for me. So I clicked the button and waited. Okay, so they got back to me on WhatsApp. I had to contact some company. I assume it's WeFun. It kind of sucks and it's kind of scary that, you know, if the company goes down, it's all just gone. Or if someone doesn't reply to the WhatsApp message, you're, you just don't have a device. But now we have an online device. So you can see here you have a local control mode and a remote control mode, so it says device found, Tina 2S. Let's go local, because realistically, okay, that didn't work. Con con connect. It said device found locally. Oh, now it says device found, connect. Connection failed. All right, let's just get some filament in this thing. We'll go to the menu. I think it said to preheat it, so we'll go to control, temperature, preheat PLA. Preheat PLA. Wait for that to heat up. Look, load filament. Oh, it's doing. It's doing something. Heating nozzle, please wait. So it is coming to temperature. I was worried then because it was just flashing. It's been so long since I've used Marlin. End of three days, like five years ago. How would we do this? We would. Where's the hole? Go through here, you can't Just push it through. It's 200 degrees, it's going down if anything. Oh, insert filament and press button. It's making a crazy noise. Press button, wait for filament purge. Do you remember when every printer didn't have a poop shoot? This is a lot of purge. It just says wait for filament purge at the top. Okay, I just pressed the button, then pressed continue and asked me to do it. I think that would have just purged forever, maybe. I'm going to press, these are print from TF. I know I just set up the phone, but let's print from the SD card first. Let's give it the best chance it's got. Just print the ship. The nozzle is touching the bed, but it's touching the bed with filament on the end. You remember when printers used to take ages to come to temperature? I had a CL10 V3 at one point, and heating that bed 
would actually take forever. Oh, it's going, it's going. To be fair to it, it's sticking to the bed. I just think the Z offset needs to be a little bit lower. Those, those layers aren't even close to squished enough. Can you see the gaps in between them? Let me show you. Look at that. Those gaps are like a meter wide. So I'm editing the footage now whilst this continues to print. It's gonna take an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, I've realized that that is intentional. I watched a couple of reviews on this just to see, because I wanted to see whether my Z rod, maybe I put that too high and it just wasn't gonna work properly. No, it's a raft. I didn't realize it was a raft. Obviously it wasn't printing like a bench here. I did realize that, but that's all good. This is how it's meant to be. Do you know what is great about this 3D printer? Like I was just readjusting the camera, but you can just, I can just bring it to you. Like the P1, uh, the A1 Mini is light, but it's it's not like this. I don't actually. It is a bench. It's printing on a raft. I didn't realize. Okay. So I'm gonna let this do this thing. I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. It's gonna print fine. I mean, this. I don't know how much filament this is. It's it's 100 grams of filament. It's gonna print well, it's so quiet. It's quite rugged, quite like the design. The only issues I had with it were because I bought it second hand. It was attached to a cloud, it was attached to another account, but they actually got rid of it immediately. They deregistered uh, de it. All I messaged them was saying, hey, can you deregister this? I bought it on eBay. They sent me back a message, no problem. So we'll let us do this thing. We'll get the slicer downloaded so we can tune some settings. Because I don't want to print with a raft. I haven't printed with a raft in five years. Okay, so the bench is just completed. It, it took about the time that it said. So here it is. Completely unprocessed. Uh, there's a little stringy at the top. Came off the bed really easily. And the raft came off. Um, for look at that. It's actually not bad. It's it's not great. I'm putting it under harsh lighting here so you can see everything. Like it's it's certainly not even close to any bamboo printer. Maybe not even like a tuned ender three level. It's it's just okay. We're gonna try the desktop slices. So we have their version or build of Cura, and then we have Wii Builder. I've I've got some things to say about Wii Builder, but then I might have an Orca slicer profile for it. So. We'll see how that goes. Maybe we can do some slicer tuning and just get the, the best we can out of this. But overall, you know, this is about an 80 pound print. I also just wanted to point out the bed is double sided. It does have this like mirrored finish to it. And then you've got this more matte, not quite textured, but just matte build plate to it. Right, so these are your slicer options when it comes to the Tina 2S. You've got Wii Builder. We're not even gonna try this. It's not worth using at all. I wish I could re-slice this model. It went quick at that time. The first time I sliced it, it actually took like 25 seconds. We've got a Cura profile. So this is on WeFund's website. You can download this in a zip file. It's just a Cura profile. So you could just get this from anywhere, make yourself, uh, make one yourself. And you've got way more options, way more slicer capability. I'm more used to things that you can see in my taskbar, like Bamboo Slicer and Orca Slicer, or Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer. We do have a profile for it. I don't think that's going to make things like loads better for the printer, to be honest. Um, but we're going to try this. This is something I actually sell. I'm going to put it on the printer and we'll see how it does, whether you can actually print production parts. It's kind of a difficult print. You know, it, we're not going to put supports here because I don't need that on my Bamboo printers or any other printer. We'll see how it goes, see how long it takes. We'll see how it goes. It's going to take significantly longer. It's going to take an hour and 11 minutes, but it's a seven gram print. Let's see how it does. Something I just wanted to show you, because obviously this is a secondhand printer. So we've got an Android folder. I'm not going to go too far deep because it actually shows like an Amazon ID. And it does have the manual in video. And if you have a Chromebook, there's a web version, possibly, of a slicer. Yeah, so I've just opened it up. You you do have a web slicer. I guess that kind of makes sense. So honestly, it's it doesn't look much worse than the actual Wii Builder that we're using. 
But it's nice to know that if you have a child and they only have a Chromebook or maybe even a tablet, then they could use this. And you remember when I said I don't think this printer had been used much? Someone's just placed just a dummy 13 STL file. Obviously the printer is not going to be able to print an STL file, you need the G code. This, I don't think they ever used it. I don't think they ever printed anything with this printer. Now I did say we were going to try and use some regular filaments on this printer. So we've got a roll of bamboo green, the green that comes with when you buy a bamboo printer. Let's unload this filament and see what we can do. We might need an external spool holder. I don't think this is going to be okay. It's, it's touching the table. I'm going to need to go and find my external spool holder. Cannot find it, so we're just going to have to use the Sunlu dryer. No idea where the external spool holder is. Let's give this a go. Okay, so filament loaded. It, it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. Let's start the print. Same as we did before. Print from DF, dyno ring holder, print. Should we level the bed first? Yeah, it'll be fine. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, I think it's safe to say that you enjoy my content. If you want to check out the Patreon in the description, we have models exclusive where you can either license them to sell or just download them. We are behind the scenes and you get all of our videos either at least early or definitely add sponsor everything free from that. Just enjoy the content and also support the channel. Thank you. So the cloud print's done. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Everything on this printer is small, but Check it out. Again, came on a raft. Oh, it's a bit harder to take off. There we go. Focus. It's not great. It, it's a weird print to have on your store at this size for these printers. It, you don't get any of the detail. You can see it's just not, not a great printer overall but no less impressive than or more impressive than any of the other prints so we've tried every method of printing we've tried external rolls of filament and now my conclusion so who do i think this printer is for i don't think it's for anybody who plans to sell any of their 3d prints I'm not even sure if I would recommend it for a school because spare parts for this thing, it has a lot of non-standard parts. I think if you have a child, maybe between the age of like 10 and 13, who's just curious about getting into 3D printing and you can get it for the price that I got it, around 80 pounds, and get it cheaper, 100%. Then I think this could be a good option for them getting into 3D printing, learning the ins and outs, and it's not something like a bamboo printer. They will probably have to tinker with this at some point, learn how it works and fix it. I don't think that's such a bad thing anymore. I don't think I'll be keeping this printer. Obviously, I have no reason for it. I've got a bunch of P1Ss in the background. We have a new printer coming where this isn't for us. I think if you're basically anybody else and you're looking for a cheap, small 3D printer for a beginner, I think you go Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I honestly do. They're about the same price range, unfortunately, new and used. You can get used Bamboo Lab A1 Minis for around 90 to 110. It's about the same price as the Wii Fun. I try not to be a bamboo shill, but they are just the ones that just work. But the problem is you will have issues. But then with bamboo, you get next day or two day delivery for almost every part in one of the 3D printers. And that's the best part about them. People who tell you you'll never have any issues with a Bamboo Lab printer, haven't run them for enough hours, haven't owned enough of them. There's a reason we have a whole drawer full of spare parts for all of our printers, but it's also a good thing that we can have that. I hope this video has helped you decide on whether you should be looking at a WeFun printer. Swayed you either way, let me know. If you have any alternatives, also let me know. We have another printer review coming up. It's coming next week from when this video is uploaded. It's going to be a 40 by 40 by 40 centimeter printer. It's going to be a big one, so make sure you subscribe for that. Check out the links in the description. We have a Patreon. 
and we'd love if you came and supported, even joining the free tier, because that will give you exclusive content that we don't upload anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.